Right, our first maths lesson today is uh, multiplying unit fractions. So you've all done this before during your uh, arithmetic tests. So it's something that you've actually practiced quite a bit before. So let's have a look at the first slide. So the first slide, what I want you to do is to just multiply all these numbers. You're welcome to do them in your head. You're welcome to uh, get a pen or a pencil, piece of paper and write them down. I will do them in my pen and annotate as I go along. Hopefully, you will do it a lot quicker than what I will. So hopefully you've got every single one right. Give yourself a pat on the back if you have. And then what we'll do is we'll move along to the next slide. Now, our first picture is showing 1 8th times by 4 equals something and equals something else. So let's have a look first of all at our picture underneath. Each picture shows a circle divided equally so each each circle is a whole divided equally into one two three four five six seven eight parts and that's why our denominator our bottom number in a fraction is showing eight now in each of our circles we have one part shaded so that means our one goes in our top number of our fraction which is our numerator which is showing one so each circle is indicating one eighth now remember when we are multiplying with fractions with a whole number what we are doing is we are multiplying our numerator in this case our unit fraction our number one and we're going to multiply that by four Remember, not, do not multiply the denominator, which is our bottom number. So we can do 4 times by 1 is 4. Remember that we've got to keep our denominator the same. We are not multiplying our denominator. So 1 eighth times by 4 is 4 eighths. However, we do have another fraction. It, 4 eighths is the same as something else. And we've got to simplify our fraction in preparation for year six. So like we've been teaching you, we look at the, the, the highest number that we can divide both numbers by. And in this case, we always should go straight to our numerator because our numerator would always be, could indicate being the highest number. Now, our numerator, our top number in our fraction, is saying 4. I know that 4 is in the 4 times table. I know that I can divide 4 by 4. And if I divide 4 by 4, it equals 1. That's 1 lot of 4 equals 4, or 4 divided by 4 equals 1. Also, I know that my 4s can, I know that my 8s can be divided by 4, or I know that my 4s, if I do my times tables, can make 8. So I do 8 divided by 4 equals 2, or there are two 4s in 8. And actually, 4 eighths is the same as 1 half. So that's my simplified fraction. I'll just circle it just here, my simplified fraction. Let's move on to our next slide. It says here, write the calculation that matches the image. So what we've got is we've got our fraction multiplied by something. 
equals another fraction and equals another fraction, which is our simplified fraction. Now, underneath, we have two sets of images. We have two bars, one on top of the other, and then we have the same as, okay, a bar running across the side. Now, first of all, I'm going to look at, I'll circle it, I'm going to look at this, because this will give me the fraction that I need to put in to this area just here. First of all, I look at my holes. I've got two holes here, but they've been divided each into equal parts. And I count going along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So each of my holes have been split into ten equal parts. That's the first thing I need to do. And then I need to look at, in each of my holes, how many have been shaded in in each of them. And I look at this part here because that's my shaded in part. And I notice actually out of all 10 parts, only one has been shaded in. So it's actually one tenth is my fraction. However, I'm multiplying this by two because it's two bars. I'm multiplying it by two. So it's actually one tenth times by two. Now we're going to be looking at this section just here because that is equal to. And remember, when we're multiplying a fraction by a whole number, we are just multiplying the numerator. We do not change the denominator. So one times by two is two. And we keep our denominator the same, like so. So it's actually two tenths. However, two tenths is the same as or equal to a more simplified fraction. So again, what I'm doing is I'm looking at a number, my highest number that I can use to divide both of those numbers to make another whole number. And my highest number here is my numerator again, which is two. Two divided by two is one. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 2 tenths is the same as or equal to 1 fifth. Right, let's look at the next slide. It says here, match the correct answer to the calculation below. 1 sixth times by 4 equals. So I apply my knowledge. I apply my knowledge, so I'm going to write it down just to help me out. One. Sorry, do apologize. One sixth times by four. That equals. So again, I'm applying my knowledge. So I've got one times by four because I want to be multiplying my whole number with my numerator. So one times by four is four. Remember to keep your denominator the same. It's actually four six. But do I have four six in any of my answers of A, B or C? I can see six quarters. I can see four twenty fourths and I can see two thirds. So I need to simplify my fraction. So I have four six and I want to find the equivalent fraction to 4 6. Now, here we can look at numbers that divide into these two numbers to make our most simplified fraction. Now, if I choose 1, if I choose 4, I'm sorry, if I look at my numerator here, if I choose 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1. However, if I choose again, I need to keep it the same number. If I have four again and I try to divide uh, six by four, it doesn't make a whole number. So I need to choose, I'm going to put a line through this. I need to choose another number that I can use to divide both numbers by. And I'm looking for quite a high number. And I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to look at the number four and the number six. Now, the number four 
and the number 6 go both into the 2 times table. They don't both go into the 3 times table because 4 does not, does not fit perfectly into the 3 times table. So I'm looking at the 2 times table now. So I'm going to divide 4 by 2, which equals 2. Then I'm going to look at 6 divided by 2 equals 3. So... 4 6 is the equivalent to 2 thirds. So my correct answer is C. Now let's have a look at question number 4. It says here complete the calculations. 1 seventh times by something equals, and as we can see, we have a shape that's completely filled, a hole that's been completely filled here. And then again, we have two sevenths that's been shaded in our next circle. And then that equals our mixed number, our whole number and our proper fraction. And then underneath, we've got one fifth times by something. So first of all, we know you can count them up, but you should know by now that if I'm looking at sevenths, one hole, is actually seven sevenths. I can count that up just in case. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I've got two sevenths being shaded in here. Now, how many sevenths altogether? That is nine sevenths. So, one seventh times by now if i times one and i need to get to the number nine it's actually been multiplied by nine i know that because it's nine sevenths one times by nine is nine and i keep my denominator the same so nine sevenths is one whole and my two sevenths now let's have a look at the next one. I know that my hole, and I can count them up if I want, just like this, four, five. But I know that this has been split into five equal parts. A hole is five fifths. I'm going to add how many fifths? One, two fifths. Five add two is seven. So I've got seven fifths. Make sure I finish that five off correctly. There we go. So I know now that one fifth times by now, how many fifths have I got all together? I have seven fifths. So one times by seven equals seven fifths. One fifth times by seven equals seven fifths, which is, like I said, we've got one hole completely shaded in here and two fifths and that is today your varied fluency so what i'm going to do is you'll have a pdf document make sure you use your pen on that pdf document because you can use it because you can annotate on it answer the questions and then send that back to us and we can mark that for you. All right, good luck everybody and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.